Hi there, welcome to this week's Angel Reading. I'm Rachel Skull Talk and I'm an angel medium and an energy therapist. So I've got the cards today from the um, brand new Kyle Gray Angels and Ancestors deck. Oh my God, they're so amazing. I love them so much. They might well be my new favorites. And I've already pulled you a card, but I'm going to pull you another one in a second. But let's talk about this one and let's talk about the energy that's going on at the moment. So there's this intense energy of change and it's not just, you know, change a few things, throw out a few things out of your wardrobe or clear the clutter, although things like that do help because they help to get the energy moving. It's an intensity of, it's, it just feels like massive pressure and the pressure is getting you to have a look at, you know, at yourself. And getting you to have a look at what you've been putting up with, accepting, um, making do with, that isn't honouring the divine being that you are inside. So, you know, that can be anything from your relationships, from the way you interact with people or people interact with you, from the house you live in, the location you live in, the, the money you're earning or allowing yourself the money you're spending the food and the alcohol or the drinks that you're putting in your body, all of that is like, is this honoring the divine light that's within you? And and it's not just within you, like a little tiny spark and everything else is just, you know, human and and it's it's the whole being. And, And the more you recognize yourself as I am a magnificent, divine being of love, I am a goddess, I am a healer, I am a a god. I am a divine light, I am a light worker, I'm a warrior. You know, the more you honor that inside, and that isn't coming from an arrogant, selfish, negative place of, you know, oh, I'm such such a big-headed person, I'm better than everyone else. That's not the ego place that it's coming from. It's coming from this kind of, really, look at who I really am and look at how I've not been honoring that part of me. So this intense pressure at the moment is, is, is really making us look at that. But it's also making you look at what you put up with and what you do in order to make, um, try to make life bearable, but it's actually, you know, draining you or, or putting you down. So living up to other people's expectations, constantly trying to people please, constantly worrying about the opinions of other people, or pandering, fawning, um, panicking because of, of, you know, how other people might be thinking or acting, or on the other hand, getting angry, getting, you know, stressed, draining your own life um, energy through resentment, through feeling cranky about other people, how other people have, have treated you. And see, whilst that is part of the process of the wheel turning, it's not where you're supposed to get stuck. And if you do get stuck there, that can have a very toxic effect on your mind, body, and spirit. And your body will let you know that it's becoming toxic for you because you'll start to get illness and aches and pains and and things will start to go wrong. So it's very important right now that you do the cleaning out of the resentments, the cleaning out of the unforgiveness and the judgments and the, you know, I'm better than, or they're better than, or they're not as good as. All of that has to go. Now, there's a difference, and I've said this before on these videos, that there is a difference between judgment and discernment. So, you know, you might say, like, Rachel, I've got to be able to know that that guy, the way he treated me was awful, so that I walked away from him, or or that that wasn't the right relationship for me because he was, he acted like a pig. So you can say, yeah, sure, that's, that's all you needed to know. You needed to know that this person wasn't acting in your best interest, is, is coming from a low agenda, isn't a, um, treating you right, or doesn't match your vision for yourself. And then all the other stuff, which is judgment, resentment, all the, all the ideas that you have about why that exists and, and whether it's right or wrong, those are the judgments and those are the things that you let go. But yes, you do need discernment in order to know what what's right for you. And what might be right for you might not be right for everyone else. And what might be not right for you, and you might be done with and finished with, 
And the opinions of others might be that, oh, that's such a shame, you shouldn't leave that, that's so valuable, that, you know, I wish I had that. That's, that's nothing to do with you. You've got to listen to your inner guide. You've got to go within and listen to that wisdom and not second guess it. What would it be like to completely trust the thoughts and the feelings that you have inside instead of shopping out your opinions, your decisions, your whole life to the opinions of other people and and only making decisions because other people tell you that it's okay for you to make them or only going forward because it it it's what other people want you to do. That means that you're not listening to the, the inner wisdom and you're not trusting it. And just imagine that you did trust it. Imagine that all through today, what happens if you only listen to that voice within? Maybe you would normally go and get your cappuccino at lunchtime, but today you don't feel like it. But there's a little voice inside you that says, well, you have it every day and it normally makes you feel good, but today you're not feeling quite like it. Maybe you feel a bit off color or maybe it's just not appealing to you and you'd rather have a juice. Listen to that and do it rather than go with the habit or what other people expect or what the maybe the barrister's go, um, the, is going to miss you if you don't order your coffee. You know, we make so many decisions based on what other people want and we get into a habit until it comes to the crux point where we don't make the right decision for ourselves, whether it be financially, romantically, health-wise, physically, in your career, whatever it is, it has to come down. And the more guided you are by that inner self, the stronger you will feel and the more flowy your life will go. And yes, we need advisors, we need healers, we need people to hold the light and, and point, hold the light over the signpost that's showing us where to go. Maybe people that that can activate your your, um, your your inner knowledge, your inner wisdom, or your inner desire. But we don't need people that take control of us and tell us what they, they think we should do. That always comes down to us. We have free will at the end of our lives. We have to recognize that our life is the sum total of our free will. And if it, during that lifetime, you decided to give that free will power over to someone else. Well, that was still your free will. That was still your choice. So we must, you know, our freedom is our greatest gift, our freedom of, of, of choice. And your angels are with you all the time. And so your angels will never try to control you. Your angels won't try to stop you if you drink that cappuccino or you decide to go bungee jumping and you've got a bad back. You know, your angels can't stop you. They'll give you nudges and hints and speak to you through your intuition, your feelings, your thoughts, your inner vision, maybe your dreams. But your angels can't stop you because they don't have the right to intervene in your free will. But they will always try to guide you. And if you make a mistake, they'll always try to guide you back again. And particularly when you say, right, I'm ready to listen to the, the guidance of my soul, which is the same as the guidance of God and your angels. It's no different. If you're being guided through your ego, by what you think are angels or your spirit, that's not, that's not spirit. That's your ego. That's a lower, darker, negative vibe. It's not what angels would do. Angels will never try to take control of your life. They do intervene as what happened to me when I first got introduced to angels is that I got saved from a road accident because the angels stepped in and helped me moments before it happened. So they intervene in a life and death situation before my time. And that's that's how angels will, will work with us. They will intervene if it's life and death before our time, but that's the only time they're allowed to, because this life is our agreement to be in free will. So sometimes when we're asking for things and we're saying, why doesn't it change? Why aren't the angels? Why isn't the universe? Why isn't God helping us? It's because we're not being clear enough. We're not letting go enough. We're not, we're not being specific. We're not stepping forward. We're getting caught up in the negatives, the resentment. We're getting caught up in the wheel and not listening to our inner self. So this brings me to the card that I have for you today, which is really amazing because I pulled this card on Friday. I did a random um, live on Friday with you on Friday afternoon. I also pulled it separately for the Instagram post this weekend. And here it is again. Mm -mm, three times is a charm. We have to notice what the angels bring us three times. Now, the message of this card, it shows this kind of, this guy, he's covered in the cloak. Look at the cloak. And this cloak reminds me of something I wrote about in my first book, Loving Your Sensitive Self, A Guide for Empaths, How to Protect Your Energy. 
I, the angels gave me a cloak like this to visualize over myself anytime I felt like other people's energy was intruding on me. And it was, it was blue velvet, it had purple lining, it had um, sparkles like the stars. Now just look at that, it's on Kyle Gray's deck, um, drawn by Lily Moses, the amazing artist. And he's got a telescope and the message is set your sights higher, stargazer. So it's asking us to stop accepting less than you want and you really deserve and desire. Set your sights even higher to what you want and, that it, and let go of the idea that it's greedy or wrong or selfish. It's about lifting your life up. So many people are asking me all the time, how do I change my life? Why am I so blocked? Why can't I get past this financial block or this relationship block? And the reason is because they don't see a higher picture for themselves. They keep accepting less than what they really want. They keep going back to that toxic relationship and just hoping it's going to suddenly miraculously change. They keep digging the same hole for themselves. They keep going and doing the same things in their businesses. So it's about setting your sights on what you really want and making it the highest vision of all. This or something better, God. Make this the highest for my highest good and the highest good of everybody. So setting your sights higher, connecting in with your guides, with your angels, connecting into the cosmos. You know, I do a meditation every morning where I connect the light within me up, up, up through the sky, up through the Earth's atmosphere and into the cosmos. And it's the place where there is peace beyond all understanding. There's complete peace up there. And that's where you can more clearly hear your guides and, and your angels. So you can do that. You can connect in and send some energy, send a beam of energy from your heart up into the cosmos and ask for the angels and God to, to speak with you, to contact, to consciously contact them, to listen to what it is that you have to ask. But remember, be specific. The angels are saying you've got to raise your vibration. You've got to come out of all of this, the neediness. You've got to come out of the negative, poor me, the, the, you know, the lower realms of energy, which keep you stuck and churning over the same stuff again. Yes, drama happens. Dramas will come. People will come and try to pull you down. People will come with their negativity and just kind of splat it on you. But the thing is, it's your choice, free will, remember, whether or not you go with that or whether you decide to shake it off and say, okay, this isn't going to affect my life. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get involved in this. The people I know that are the most stuck are the ones that keep hitting those, those lower energies and, and stay there because they have a, an unconscious desire to heal and fix and rage against those things. But what they don't realize is that dark energy is like, it's like gunk. It's like <laughs> mud. It will suck you in with it so you don't end up changing that you end up becoming that because it's it's got a stronger vibe than you have and many many light workers get stuck in that way so i said i'd pull one more card i'm running out of time um but i will let's see what the angels have to say this brand new deck okay shield maiden now look at her Protect your energy against those lower vibes. Don't go there. Don't go in to play with them. Don't go and meet them on their playing field. Don't go and try and rage against them and get them to change. Rise, protect and rise. Make plans and focus. You've got to focus on your own journey now. So thanks so much for watching and listening. I've changed my posse today. I felt like being in my lounge room with the beautiful um, Aboriginal art behind me and um, the the wattle that I picked this morning on my morning walk. And I just want to let you know that Wealthy Healing Goddess, it's a spiritual healing training course with business strategy training, as well as giving you unbelievable, awesome skills in working with angels and energy medicine, reading, opening your intuition, energy channeling, angelic Reiki, cutting cords, clearing energy, everything that I do in my, in my energy work, I'm passing on to you. This is a certified course. It's four months. It's two weekends and eight online modules, as well as extra bonuses like a video course and access 
to other things that I webinars that I'm doing. So if you're interested, please get in touch. This is for people who want to be healers or who are already healers and want to up-level their business, really reach for the stars. Um, anyone that is interested in working with angels, energy, want to know everything there is to know about that. Maybe you want to heal yourself and you're not sure if you want a business. This is a transformational course. It will take you through an energetic and emotional ascension, a detox, a cleansing and an opening of your spiritual centers, as well as focusing you in the direction that you want to go in. So please get in touch, PM me or send me an email, jump on my website and I will, we can arrange a call and talk about it. Angel blessings, have an amazing and miraculous week ahead and remember to set your sights higher.